welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on the topic acid base and salts. It's from four. And we're going to be looking at the different types of oxides and hydroxides. In the previous lesson we introduced bases and we looked at even the strength of bases. Now we can classify them. So today we are going to look at these different types of base oxides and hydroxides and how they react uh, with uh, different compounds. So oxides are usually compounds of oxygen and another element. There are usually four categories of oxides. We have basic oxides that are basic in nature. This means that when you dissolve them in water, they form hydroxide ions. We have ac acidic oxides, which when you dissolve them in water, they form an acidic solution. We have neutral oxides, which when you dissolve them in water, they do not form, they are not acidic nor basic, they are neutral. And then we have amphoteric oxides, uh, which are both acidic and neutral. Basically, they react both with acids and bases. So basic oxides are usually oxides of metal, metals which are electronegative they are react with acids to form salt and water so we've mentioned this before in form one so this is what we call the neutralization reaction and for example so like calcium oxide magnesium oxide copper oxide zinc oxide etc so metal oxides that they react with acids to form salt and water so we have also acidic oxides these are the ones that are formed from non-metals uh, so the, the metals are the electropositive and then the nonmetals are the ones that are electronegative. So many of them react with water to form acids um, and known as acid and hydride. For example, we know carbon dioxide, if it dissolves in water, it forms carbonic acid. Sulfur dioxide forms uh, sulfurous acid. Sulfur six oxide forms sulfuric six oxide. Uh, sulfuric six acid. And then phosphoric acid forms phosphorus. Uh, phosphoric acid and then nitrogen four oxide forms nitric acid. We also have amphoteric, amphoteric oxides which behave both as bases and acids. This means that they can react with both acids and bases. They usually formed from metals in the middle group of the periodic table. And the ones that we have is aluminium, zinc, and lead. You notice the uniqueness, especially when we come to qualitative analysis in our next lesson. We are going to be centering mostly our qualitative uh, along these three because they will have uh, unique, uh, different properties in comparison to the other metal ions. So you start with the reaction to the photoelectric oxide. So if you take a small aluminium oxide, uh, zinc oxide, copper oxide, and calcium oxide. We reacted them with acids and also reacted them with sodium hydroxide. So aluminium oxide, when you react it with an acid or the nitric acid, it will dissolve. Uh, when you react it, uh, when you react with the sodium hydroxide, remember here we are using nitric acid and here we are using sodium hydroxide. So when you react aluminium oxide with nitric acid, it's going to dissolve. And then when you react with sodium hydroxide, it's dissolved. So you can see it's reacted both with an acid and a base. If you react with zinc oxide as well, with an acid it dissolves, and with a base it dissolves. Lead oxide, it dissolves, with a base it dissolves. The same applies for the hydroxide. You, not, you notice zinc hydroxide, lead hydroxide, and aluminium hydroxide, all of them react both with the nitric acid and sodium hydroxide. So these oxides are soluble in acids as well as in alkalis. So they react with acid to form salt and water. It uh, forms normal neutralization reaction. The lead oxide reacts with the hydrogen ions to form lead ions and water. So you can see 
the formation of water, the neutralization process. For the hydroxide, it's the same. Lead uh, hydroxide reacts with hydrochloric acid to form lead chloride and water. So reaction with alkali, now this is the uniqueness with these uh, three metals. These oxides and hydroxides also react with alkali, for example, sodium hydroxide. Uh, in this, like they, they behave like acids. Their reactions with alkali involve the formation of complexes. And you notice the complexes have a uniform ion. So let's look at details. So lead oxide with sodium hydroxide, it forms sodium plumbed. And you can see we have four hydroxyl ions inside, lead ions and sodium ions. If you were to, quite, to break it into ionic equation, you can see the ionic equation. This is the complex that has formed. Remember, for you to get to know the charge outside, you add all the charges inside. So this is 2 plus, this is 4 plus. So 4 minus, sorry, or minus 4. So it means there's a minus 2 that is remaining, which will be balanced out by sodium. Always ensure that the charges can, can cancel out so that you can get the correct formula. So that's it. And then aluminium oxide also reacts with uh, sodium hydroxide to form aluminate, as you can see. This one is a bit different. Remember, this is positive 3, and then this is negative 4. So there's a minus 1 remaining. So for the zinc, it's the same as for the lead. Hydroxides behave in the same manner as well. So for the aluminium, you see you get the same product, uh, aluminium hydroxide with sodium hydroxide, you get aluminium hydroxide. Uh, zinc hydroxide with hydroxide, you get the sodium zincate or the tetra hydroxo zinc ion, zinc to ion. And then the lead, you can see, um, if you re react the lead hydroxide with sodium hydroxide, you get the sodium plummet. So these are the formulas. Uh, make sure you remember this because we are going to use it for the next lesson when we look at qualitative analysis. So we have zinc oxide and hydroxide. They both react with the acid to form zinc nitrate. And they also react with the sodium hydroxide to form the same complex, both of them. Uh, the lead oxide also reacts, and lead hydroxide also, both of them react with the acid to form lead nitrate. And they react with sodium hydroxide to form the complex. For aluminium, um, oxide and hydroxide, they react with the acid to form sodium aluminium nitrate and then the complex also is formed uh, as you can see so you notice the complex is the same the only one that is different is for aluminium just because of the balancing of the charges let's do a few questions uh, so that you can conclude what is an apothetic oxide so this is an oxide that can react with both acids and bases. Write two ionic equation to show aluminium hydroxide as apoteric. So basically what you have been taught to do is to write the ionic equation for aluminium hydroxide reacting with uh, sodium hydroxide or we can use as well as potassium hydroxide. So this is going to be uh, it's aluminium, sorry, aluminium hydroxide plus hydroxide ions to form so this caters for it can be uh, sodium, it can be potassium hydroxide. So this is the ionic equation. You are told to write the full equation, you make sure you involve the cations. So that's it for today on 
uh, bases and different types of oxides and hydroxides. So for our next lesson, we will be focusing on qualitative analysis. So we are going to look at how we test in the lab, how we are able to identify unknown compounds in the lab using both sodium hydroxide and ammonia. So you notice you repeat this um, apoteric oxide, especially when we went to qualitative, and you notice how unique they are, both when they react with the sodium hydroxide and when they react with the aluminium hydroxide. So that's it for today. See you in the next lesson.